Let's play a game. I'm going to ask you which wrestler do you think is going to get married first, Austin Jenkins or Adam Cole? Now, I'm willing to bet most of you said Adam Cole, but that's kind of funny because they're actually the same person. Austin Jenkins is Adam Cole's real name. But why did your brain gravitate to saying Adam Cole in the first place? Well, it most likely has to do with a certain psychological phenomenon, which just so happens to be the topic of this episode. Because today... I want to take this time to thank all of my Patreon supporters out there like Cool Ass Jack, Tom Hughes, and Caleb Robinson. And I also want to remind everyone that brand new Patreon polls are up right now. The mere exposure effect, also known as the familiarity effect, was first studied by physicist, philosopher, and psychologist Gustav Fechner back in 1876, and it has gone on to be researched and further developed by scientists ever since. The idea is simple. Humans are just more likely to trust something that they see as being more familiar. Why is that? Well, it's because when you see something you recognize, it activates two parts of your brain, the occipital and the parietal, which then releases the hormone oxytocin. However, another part of your brain, known as the amygdala, is triggered when you come across something unfamiliar. And that part is your brain's danger zone. Now, this was a key component to our evolution as a species, as quickly recognizing something that we already know is safe kept us alive versus something unfamiliar that was still yet to be proven. And this translated to everything from who's an enemy to who's an ally, what's safe to eat, and what animal should we hunt versus what animal will hunt us. But today, while we do have a much better grasp of this sort of stuff, this kind of thinking still does have lingering effects. For instance, have you ever had a friend who absolutely refuses to try any new foods? Or how about a song that's just comforting even though you've already heard it a thousand times? Well, that's the kind of thing we're talking about here. In fact, this very principle also serves as the catalyst for the Eddie Murphy movie The Distinguished Gentleman, where he wins an election to Congress just because he has a familiar name. However, one downside to this is that this mechanism can be used against us, particularly by advertisers who want us to strongly associate a bond with their brand. Let's go back to Adam Cole for a moment. As I'm sure many of you know, Adam Cole has a certain saying, Bebe, which was pure genius, as he shouts out his own name as part of a phrase that people like to say, and by association, we started to like him too. Now, don't get me wrong, Adam Cole is an incredibly talented individual, so I'm not trying to say that this is the only reason why you like him. I'm just saying that it was a good way to get on people's radar and cultivate familiarity with the wrestling audience. And I have to say, in a lot of ways, I think this kind of bond is more important in wrestling than it is in some other industries. For example, if some doctor prescribes you some medication, odds are you have no idea what the brand is, you just take it because the doctor told you to. But when it comes to professional wrestling, let's say you see two different match cards. Odds are you're more likely to want to go to the show that has names you recognize versus the one that's filled with names you never heard of. Which can be a real shame because there might be some great talents and great matches that you would really enjoy, but your sheer reluctance prevented you from ever finding out. Or worse yet, the mere exposure effect can be even more restricting than just that. For instance, what if you go to a show filled with lesser known talent because your friend forces you to? But while you're watching it, you already subconsciously decided that you're not gonna like it because you don't know anyone here. When in reality, you paid way less for this show than you would have for a WWE one, this show was closer to your house, and parking is way better than it would have been at a major stadium, and perhaps on top of all of that, many of these performers might perform more to your liking than a lot of the WWE roster does. But, unfortunately, your closed mind prevented you from ever registering that as possible. However, as bad as that is, there is another issue with the mere exposure effect backfiring on you. And, it's on the reverse side of things. Let me ask, who's your favorite wrestler? And, are you sure that you really like that wrestler? Because, what if you only like that wrestler? Because of sheer familiarity. For example, let's say there's a match that you keep hearing breaks the rating scale and it's so good and you also agree that it's the GOAT. Or that there's a wrestler that people keep claiming is the best performer ever and you two put him on your Mount Rushmore. Or have you ever watched a match with two wrestlers that you've never seen before but only did so because the video kept getting recommended to you on your feed? Can you say for certain that being exposed to these claims didn't skew your opinion and make you like them in the first place? Especially when you stop to think about it and realize that you have a hard time coming up with any evidence to support these opinions. 
The problem here is that opinions are subjective. There is no such thing as objectively good, no matter how much some people really want to believe that there is. So what constitutes as good can be anything, really. If a child is raised being told something is a pretty bird, he's gonna grow up thinking that's a pretty bird, even if it's a lampshade. And in some cases, people are so trusting with the familiar that if they're told over and over again that something or someone is the best, they'll just start repeating it themselves, even sometimes when it doesn't line up with their own normal tastes. And this is particularly true about younger fans who tend to just trust the opinions of those older than them that they already are familiar with. Or if they're just vulnerable to WWE propaganda and simply regurgitate whatever Vince McMahon's high opinion is of certain wrestlers, even if they've never actually seen them wrestle before. However, there is yet another another side to this as well because familiarity is definitely a double-edged sword. As sometimes, exposure can actually have the opposite effect because you definitely can be too familiar with something. For example, have you ever seen a commercial so many times that it just makes you hate the product even though you've never tried it? Or how about that song on the radio that keeps playing all day long and you wish it would just go away? And when it comes to professional wrestling, it's real easy to apply this to the likes of John Cena and Roman Reigns. There's a fine line between exposing a wrestler just enough to be pleasantly familiar with them as opposed to being exhausted by them. This is because even though we did evolve to feel safety with the familiar, we also crave variety too. Man, humans are complicated. While people were built to easily identify what we already know, we also have a desire to know a lot of different stuff. This is because we as a species survived through easy recognition, like what plant is safe to eat, but we also thrived off of a diverse variety of food sources, allowing us to get different nutrients from different foods and therefore improving our survival. So while your picky eater friend might never try sushi, that doesn't mean he wants to eat a burger for every single meal of his life. We feel safe with the recognizable but we also want to be able to recognize a whole lot. So while we will like whatever we're exposed to, we also gotta mix it up from time to time too. However, how do we know how much is too much and how much is just enough? Well, unfortunately, there's really no formula for it. It varies from person to person, situation to situation, and there's a lot of other contexts that make it hard to tell whether your audience is getting fatigued or getting familiar. Now, with all that being said, this begs the question. How do you know if something you like is really something you like, or are you just familiar with it and programmed to like it? Well, don't worry, because that's an easy question to answer. Of course you're programmed to like it! Our opinions are influenced by everything around us. Our family, our friends, economic factors, environmental conditions, what we read on the internet, what we see on TV. And earlier when I mentioned that we evolved with certain survival mechanisms, well, that's just yet something else that affects our programming. But now that we know this, is it really such a bad thing? No, of course it isn't. No one is an island and we formulate our opinions due to an array of factors. And that's totally okay, and just knowing about this can help to make our opinions more logical and more useful in the future. If we know that we already have a built-in tendency to like something that we're more familiar with, well this gives us the opportunity to fact check ourselves, as being aware of something does give us the chance to stop and reevaluate whether or not we really like something. Emotions react way faster than logic does, so sometimes you just gotta take the time and weigh things out. But on the other hand, if there's a wrestler whose matches you enjoy simply because you're familiar with them, well, that's okay too. You don't need any more justification than just that. In the end, it's about what makes you happy. And at the same time, you could also start opening yourself up to new experiences, like lesser known independent wrestlers and promotions, instead of just automatically turning yourself off to it because it's something different. And who knows, if you do that, you might end up finding some really awesome stuff that you otherwise never would have known was there. Well, there you go, some information about the psychological phenomenon known as the mere exposure effect. What are your thoughts on the subject? Let me know down in the comments, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, Dave knows.